Today we're talking LSU. Are they a breakout candidate? All this and next in Armchair Sports Talk. Football. Welcome back. My name is Sean Hicks. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So when you take a look at LSU, breakout, that's the word that everybody said, right? Breakout last year was a great season. They really um, made a lot of improvements and they get so much back. I mean, come on, this has got to be their breakout season. And listen, as a guy who loves numbers and stats, is a big believer in S&P Plus and FBI, I should believe it, right? Like, they won 10 games the first time since 2013. They beat some really good teams, including smacking Georgia down on their home field. Um, Watch them really dominate that game and really just show that they can beat a lot of great teams. Just couldn't quite get over the hump last year. But, hey, man, Joe Burrows looked better, a real quarterback, had a real offense. I don't buy it, though. And – I admit this is a lot of me going against my traditional beliefs on watch the numbers, but the eye test to me, everything they do on offense looks so damn hard. Everything is challenging. They don't have any way to get anything easy. They don't weren't really explosive. Joe Burrows constantly looked like he was running with his head cut off. They don't really look like they have an identity. And more than anything else, it kind of looked like, they were just the same old LSU. They just happened to win some of the games that they were losing. Listen, I get it. And you have to understand that's a bias that's going to cover me while I go through each position and talk about them is I just don't believe in LSU this year. I think they're a breakout candidate. Um, and I, I think it comes down to eye test reasons more than it is number reasons. So that's why I'm getting it out of the way on the front. But let's talk about Joe Burrows for a second. I I really, you know, improved right, made uh, made LSU look a lot better, transfer quarterback, new second year in a system. I've talked all about how important second year of a new system. Going to be a senior this year. He's got all the moxie and leadership and the 65 number QB rating last year and seemed to – pull a lot of stuff out of his butt and magic horseshoes from Les Miles seem to be hanging around. Listen, he played a lot of good defenses, right? So that's going to skew your total QB QB rating because that's an aggregate. That's not a stat stat that's you um, compare based off talent against who you're playing and how good the teams you are. It's just based off total um, statistical numbers, right? So uh, that matters. And there is reasonable expectation for him to get better in year two. I'm not questioning that. What I'm questioning is the way the offense is designed right now. I mean, come on, man. You've got a guy who used to work under Les Miles running the offense that was an old NFL guy that's no experience. What are you doing? Um, it, it just doesn't look like Um, maybe you can expect some more consistency because that was the real thing last year is nothing was consistent, right? When Bill C talks about this all the time, the most important metric that he thinks when he looks at it is what is your success rate? Because success rate shows how often you can stay on the field, which gives you more chances for big plays, which gives you more chances to rest your defense, which gives you more chances to get in scoring position and start. Um, For anyone who's a big baseball fan, it's your equivalent of getting on base. It's a basic number that you have to be able to do well, and he couldn't do it. He relied on a lot of big plays by his receivers bailing him out. He had some very timely, explosive plays. They weren't consistent. They were very unexplosive. But some very timely, explosive plays throughout the year. They had a couple big special team plays, Auburn being the obvious game that that comes to mind. Um, But they also had the time where the offense just didn't work. You take a look at the Alabama game. They don't get hammered too much for it in the numbers because Alabama was so good last year, but they laid neck and they got crushed. And let's be honest, that score was not nearly as close as it was in real life. That was a boring game. Uh, the Florida game was just a giant egg lay, right? Um, looked like they were winning the game, dominating, and then their offense just fell asleep. I don't see any difference with that. I don't see Joe Burrow really progressing that much in the offense he maybe you get a little bit more explosive maybe you get a little bit more efficient 
But I, I think that it all starts with I think he has got a real cap ceiling on him. I don't think he's put it in a position to succeed. Um, from the people he's actually throwing the ball to, a lot of returning starters, but when I did all my research for this, all the local reporters seem to be expecting a youth movement here, and that's not particularly great when you're talking about a continuity and going to the next level. Hey, listen, maybe they have a bunch of Odell Beckham Juniors and Jarvis Landry's out there, right, that are just that good, that now that they're older are ready to take off. I just don't buy that narrative. To me, that means they don't think a lot of their receivers from their um, older receivers from being able to really stretch the field. They're hoping their new guys will really step up. It's probably a lot of camp speak. It's probably going to look a lot like it is last year. Um, you know, it it is a very odd thing that they're seeing. They were very good in scramble drills. They were very good at jump balls. I think they had, both of them had a very high contested catch rate, like in the sixty percent, which is sixty to seventy percent, which is very very good. Um, Expect to continue to see that, right? But not expecting this to be the thing that helps Burroughs and the offense to succeed, especially, again, when I think the offense is designed for everything to be so damn hard and not get anything easy. Um, you know, from a running back standpoint, Clyde Edwards has everything you want from an eye test. Um, you know, John Emery is essentially a co-starter. There, there was no explosiveness. This is a very poor running team, which doesn't match what you think when you think of LSU and Leonard Fournette, and we're going to pound it. But, but the reality is, like, Georgia could do that, right? Georgia could run the ball four times or um, four times for every time they passed and just wear you down and score a bunch of points, and it sucks to be you. We're just going to sit on you. Wisconsin could do that even if they had no passing game. LSU was not good. I think somewhat we're a little skewed sometimes with what stays in our mind. And we're in our mind of the, some very explosive runs against Miami beginning of the year. Um, they could not run the football worth a damn at all. They went up good running defenses. They couldn't get anything done with consistency. Um, and I don't expect that to necessarily change. I think they have some talent, right? But it, it's very unproven. And, and they're smaller guys, too, which I find is really interesting, right? Both Edwards and Armory are more like 5 to 8. I, mean, I think they're listed like 5 10, but you know how depth charts are. Um, that in theory should be explosiveness, but they kind of seem like they fit a spread offense better than they do a more of a pounder. I don't know if that really fits what they want to be able to really do and be able to run. Um, so when you get to the offensive line is, listen, you have four starters back. That's good. You had four starters back from an offense that line that wasn't really all that good last year. Um, listen, I, I think there's a reason to expect them to get better. Again, new offenses – um continuity but I, it feels to me like their their ceiling is above average i'm not even probably good probably above average is their ceiling it, it kind of reminds me of michigan's offensive line in 2016 uh maybe ohio state's offensive line last year and lots of seniors not a lot of guys that are going to go make waves in the nfl that are really capped um probably not going to give up a whole bunch of tfls probably not going to give up a whole lot of free rushers to Joe Burrows, probably going to keep him relatively well protected, um, but not elite, not dominant, not something you can lay your hat on, like say an Auburn or Georgia or even Texas A&M might be able to do um, just very, very mediocre ceiling that probably looks good against teams they can just overwhelm. And then against the ones with really good defensive lines kind of gets smoked a little. Um, you know, it, the defense, listen, Dave Moran is one of the best defense coordinators in the country. When he's been at LSU, he's never had less than a top eight defense. I'm not expecting that to happen this year. I'm expecting this to be one of the top defenses in the country. Um, I'm expecting this to be really good. And this is going to keep LSU really competitive throughout the years. Um, when they're saying not when they're playing, say not Alabama, for example, um, on defense, they lost two first-round draft picks. I mean, everyone knows Devin White. Um, but they have so many returning starters that I, I kind of expect them to, in some ways, have the potential to be better. Maybe not the up, maybe not the ceiling in some of their players, an All-American type. But that being said, I, let's look at Rashad Lawrence. I think Rashad Lawrence has All-American potential. I think he can be an All-SEC type, even with how good the SEC is on defense. Um, I think he's going to just dominate consistently. And 
They have a lot of good talent around him, especially at defensive end, that can get after it, play the run, get after the pass. Those guys probably aren't your top 10 picks, but there could be mid-round picks, I think is what you're looking for. Good depth there. If Tyler Shelton, who honestly, in some ways, I think you could argue is the single most important person on the team, is what they think he can be and what they hope he can be, that is a really good, damn good nose guard. That'd be great. He's just really good. This defensive line is going to be nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, some concern, looked good last year in spot duty. He's now the guy, redshirt sophomore, so there is a reason to expect this. Is He's old enough to be able to make the leap. Behind him is a redshirt freshman, younger guys. Um, depth isn't great, and I always like to have two nose guards. Um, but if you're sitting next to, I don't know, say Rashard Lawrence and the rest of the gang, if you can be real good, that can be enough. Um, next, listen, next man up from linebacker. I love Barksby. I love Jason. They're both going to be awesome. They're both going to be top linebackers in the country. They're going to both going to be all SEC. They're both going to be high draft picks. You don't just replace Devin White, but somehow you do a little bit here at LSU. Um, I expect them to be one of the top linebacking crew in the nation. You combine that with your defense, top defensive line, and playing these guys are going to be miserable. I mean, and, and the thing that with them too, they're so athletic combined with being sound. That, that, that's what's going to make this so hard to be able to stop. And just moving the ball is just going to be a, just going to be a damn hard piece of time. Um, cornerback, let's take a look at linebacker. It's kind of rinse and repeat. Lost some good guys. But listen, Fulton, if he can stay healthy, is a high draft pick. Um, uh, Stinger and Junior are going to be the second man up. Um, they lost talent, yeah. They lost a the first-round draft pick. I honestly think Bolton can basically be that guy. And they have so many bodies with so much star potential that all look pretty good in spot duty that at cornerback, you expect them to be pretty good. And it's the same at safety. Really guys that didn't give up a lot of big plays, some really good talent there. It's just so many bodies that played so well. It, at worst, you think they're going to be okay with the upside being more than that, given Aranda's history, given LSU's history, given the talent, and given the front seven too. I, probably going to be one of the past defense units just because the front seven is so damn good at it by itself. Even if the secondary isn't, you know, the best in the nation, it's still going to be so good when you have everything else combined. I mean, good luck running the football. This is going to be, again, I, probably a top five. Like them at Auburn, I'm super high on, on defense, even more than your traditional Alabama and Georgias that you've been seeing here. I think they're real, real good. I'm super excited. and They'll be fun to watch play too, especially with their defense. Overall, um, uh, Rand is going to have this team ready to play. They're going to be competitive in most games that aren't Alabama. They're going to be miserable to play with. They're going to be miserable to watch. And I, that, like, that, that really could be the thing that sticks in my crawl. Like, uh, to me, my prediction, 9-3, and three, which is still really good uh, given the talent, given the, just who they play and the talent they have but probably going to disappoint some people given that they are convicted to be this breakout team and everything. I honestly think they're going to be better than last year. I, I don't think given the way they got waxed by Florida and Alabama that maybe they were quite as good as their final rankings. I think they'll live up to that in a way this year. But with the offense they have, this is going to be a miserable team to watch. I'm going to hate watching them play every day. You're going to hate watching them play every day. And they're going to grind out some wins that look pretty ugly. I mean, the, to me, they're the same damn LSU team they were with Les Miles. They just don't have a lucky horseshoe. And without that, have fun getting waxed by Bama. All right, guys, let me know what you think about LSU. Drop a few comments. If Please like the video, subscribe. Share with your friends. Check out the merch store. Support the show from our channel Sports Talk. This is Sean. I'll see you next time.